Hey guys, Ulysses here. It's been a while since we've done a video about photography, but today I wanted to go through something extremely uh, important, which is two things that you'll never regret uh, doing as a photographer. Now this comes from personal experience, but there are many things <laughs> that I've uh, regretted in the past, doing or not doing uh, in these upcoming years, I would say, in my photography uh, journey. I would say, you know, especially around the gas, you know, the acquisition of, of camera gear and the letting go of camera gear. Uh, there's a lot of regret around there, I would say. But again, simply put, there are two things that I will not um, regret and, and possibly most people will never uh, regret doing. And, and simply put, this is actually input and output. Now let's start with output first. When I say output, I specifically mean practicing or going outside with your camera. Never have I ever yet, at least, uh, regretted a day that I've gone out and taken photos. And you know, this is quite obvious, but if you don't go outside, you're not gonna get any photos. And if you're not taking any photos, you're not gonna get any better. And that's just the sad uh, and harsh truth. Sometimes we're scared of going outside because maybe, you know, we think we might be wasting our time. Uh, maybe the situation or the, or the environment isn't as ideal as we want it to be. And maybe we're just scared of not getting that perfect photo or image that day. I've learned throughout the years though that a lot of the time when I feel this, when I force myself to go outside and take photos, you know, although maybe I wasn't getting any, you know, award-winning photographs or anything, I ended up liking some of the photos that I took that day, or I might be able to utilize those photos in a different uh, period of time. And at the end of the day, you can just consider this as practice. And obviously the more practice you do, the better you get at it. And I think that applies to photography as well. Some advice that I have in general to go outside and take more photos is, uh, one, uh, don't care too much about the weather. You know, setting parameters around the photos that you take is a good thing. But but if, you, if you're saying, you know, I'm only taking photos on very sunny days or I'm only taking photos on cloudy or rainy days, you're limiting yourself to those specific days. And by going out in these different types of situations, you might learn a thing or two. And another, well, very general tip that I have too, is to keep your camera ready at all times. Even if you're not the type of person that takes daily photographs, you know, if you're, if you're going to work or if you're going to meet a friend or something, just keep a camera at you, uh, with you at all times. Now, for the second thing that a photographer will never regret doing is input. And what I mean by input is studying the work of others. And these days, there are many means to do so. You can look at photographs on the internet. You can go study at workshops from other photographers. There are many means. However, still to this day, the best way you can look into other photographers' work is through photo books. And I think the more you grow as a photographer, it's interesting, the more, the more you kind of lean towards the format of a book. And at the same time, the more you can get out of a single photo book as well. Throughout the years, I've accumulated a good number of photo books, I would like to say. But this video is a special one, and I shot uh, the publisher from Italy has sent me a few books to review. I'm really happy about this uh, collaboration because I shot is an organization that is somewhat close to my heart. Uh, I've been featured on their platform quite a few years ago. And here's a very brief introduction of who iShot is. iShot is the first independent publisher that works exclusively with street photographers from all around the world. Yes, you heard it right. They are a publishing house uh, that's quite recently developed that, that basically has roots in the street photography community. What I personally like about iShot is that they work with photographers that are up and coming, contemporary photographers, you know, people that are alive, <laughs> alive and kicking. You know, a lot of the time the props go to, you know, older photographers with more experience or, you know, people that are dead. So just the fact that they're willing to contribute to the community and, and the growth of photographers up and coming is splendid. iShot has sent me a few books to review, thank you very much. The first one that we're gonna look into is Lorenzo Catena, a good friend of mine. Hey Lorenzo, and Valeria Tofanelli's um, book, Mare Terino. 
there are 173 images in this book, which is quite a lot actually, which is quite a lot, you know, um, especially considering that usually these are up and coming photographers. That's a lot of work to be put into one of these books. The paper quality is quite nice. The binding is pretty good. And also um, the contrast, the color that pops out of these books are nice as well. Perhaps I'm not showing them in, in the best light uh, through my terrible uh, video editing skills, but hopefully uh, it shows good enough. I'll share some of the photos that I like from these books and yeah, let's look at them together. I love this image by Valeria. It's a little bit hard to see with this spread, but in the middle we have this chair here divided by this, this yellow highlight, which is just a wall. And then you have this triangular light highlight here uh, that is the same color as this wall going off to the horizon. And then you have this ladyish figure here in a shadow. The contrast between this blue and this yellow and the highlights in the shadow, gorgeous. And this image shows both amazing timing with this person's beautiful stru body structure here, but also beautiful composition. We have half of this image dedicated basically to the pool and the other half of this image dedicated more to kind of an urban or, or architectural landscape. Now you have these images, a lot of blue um, ostensibly because you are in an ocean or that's kind of the setting of this book. The significance of something like this image is basically changing things up. You have these horizons and these blues and these reds, but then suddenly you have this more slightly muted colors um, with, with kind of these, I think perhaps raindrops with, with a flash, I think, which makes it almost look like snow, but this enhances foreground. And by mixing these things up and having two authors in this book, you have Valeria and Lorenzo, even if you're shooting in the same setting all the time, same environment, you get these variety of images that work well together. And again, that is the power of photographic storytelling and why these book formats work so well. This shot by Graciela, um, hi Graciela, um, we're, we're connected on Instagram. This is quite an amazing image too. The beauty is amazing. The color rendition is amazing on this image and the perspective of, I don't know, just this, these lines are just, I don't know, the geometry on this image is amazing. The color, the green, the lush greens here, and light blue in the sky, the background, it all just fits amazingly together. And this animal having enough contrast against this very bright road, this is what also makes or breaks this image, and it makes it. I'm loving this image by Sean Lotman too. Hey Sean, <laughs> he's a fellow photographer. He lives in Kyoto, I think, in Japan. I believe this is shot in the Kanazawa Modern Art Museum. Um, there's an underground pool there where you can look into. Colors are spot on, but also showing just enough reality on this and here to not make the photo too abstract. Uh, great, great photo, Sean. I'd like to summarize this video by saying that um, as photographers, you know, it's, it's important to have this constant kind of cycle, I think, of input and output. You know, sometimes I feel like I, I feel lost in photography. I feel like I'm doing something too repetitive, perhaps, or I feel, you know, maybe not as motivated. And but when I look into some of these books and these photographs, that really keeps me going again, especially, you know, when there's a day that perhaps I've designated to take photos, you know, that's the output part of it. I, these days I try to make sure that I look into some kind of photographic inspiration before that. Having that input, you know, obviously keeps me motivated, but also gives me this framework um, of, of thinking perhaps that I can bring uh, to the table when I go and shoot something candidly outside. Or, you know, if you're a portrait photographer, for example, then you can look into books and look into other photographers' work in order to kind of uh, shape up some lighting situations that you might want to work out or it might even give you ideas about, you know, how to pose your models or what kind of set you want to work on. But the conclusion of this video, what I want to say is 
So there are these two things, through practice and, and in which is output and input. I mean, these are two things that I will never regret uh, putting the time in doing. And whether you're worried about a multitude of different elements, like whether you have the right gear or not, or whether you're doing this or that right, or whether the situation that you're photographing is, is good enough or not, you know, the ultimate, the ultimate way of practicing, obviously, is getting out and shooting or studying photography. Okay, and thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, let me know if you're interested in photo books. I have many <laughs> in, in my house and I can go over them as much as I want actually. Uh, so let me know if you're interested in that stuff. Uh, catch you guys again. Goodbye. Sayonara.